Good morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season three and episode number 228 of the Daily Beaver Morning. No, 327 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. Here, 327 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Crier Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day, is Wednesday, February 28th, 2024, and it is going to be a rainy day here at the Beaver Lodge, uh, followed by some flash freezing. So, yay (laughs) for that. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. Big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, the Pepper Master, the Miss V Mysteries, from Corvid Moon Publishing and CanadianTarot.com. Before we do anything else, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Well, good morning, Mr. Beaver. A um, little better than yesterday. A little better than yesterday. Um, still can't get some imagery out of my head. That uh, is kind of haunting hmm. me. But uh, there it is. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm uh, doing better than, than yesterday. So that's always good, right? You know, one step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Kit Michael on uh, my curling team uh, uh, says that he also uh, saw the video and didn't know that it was coming. And uh, it haunts yeah. you. I have a yeah. new mug my lady bought me. Oh, grizzly mug. We like it. We like it. Um, as you might be able to tell uh, from my voice, Kits and Cubs, um, I've not my. Usual happy optimistic. No, definitely not. What's going on? No. Um, I, I got some bad oh. news yesterday on uh, more than one front. Um, basically, um, discovering uh, that certain things into which I had invested a lot of myself. I'm not going to say we're for nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, there were people, uh, I and other people, trusted. And uh, turns out that uh, the trust was not well placed, was abused of. Uh, turns out that uh, in uh, one instance, um, Unbeknownst to me, I was set up to fail, and um, uh, the attempt to make me fail was incredibly successful. Oh. Uh, And um, I've had to make some tough choices uh, to walk away from uh, certain things. 
things that I love doing. Um, but um, one can't continue anymore. This involves three different things, but one can't continue anymore uh, because um, the person is untrustworthy. And so all our activities regarding this person have ceased. Uh, another one um, is someone that I was going to be called upon to work with okay. a lot in the coming uh, months and years. And um, that person is uh, not trustworthy. Sorry to hear that. At all. And uh, would make uh, the work much harder to do. So even though it's work that I want to do, I'm going to have to step away from it because that person is not going away and there's not room for mm. both of us. And I'm just not attached to it enough to fight for it. There are things that you do because you love to do them. There are things that you do because, you know, it's not that you really love or not love to do them, but you're in a position to help and you've got the time, mm -hmm. so you do. Um, so I'm not attached to this thing. Um, it's something I was asked to do and that I enjoy doing, that I like doing, and, you know, so long as people think that I'm being helpful and contributing something. But if somebody wants to stand in the exact same spot that I'm standing, um, even though I'm already occupying the spot. It's like, can you not feel my feet under your Clearly feet? Because I'm standing here. Oh, you really want to stand? Okay. Um, I'm, if I'm really attached to it, then I fight for it. And if I'm not, then I'm like, fine. There's other places I can stand. You can have this spot. So it's sort of one of those situations. And, um, so there were, there were some projects into which I've invested myself that were uh, starting to get to a point uh, where they could start taking off. And uh, I will not be the one to see them through. Somebody's trying to take uh, credit for your work? No, no, not take credit for my work, but it's just uh, somebody wants to be involved in the similar things that I want to do. And uh, I'm very open to it, but it seems that there's a personality conflict and I cannot work with someone, especially in a volunteer capacity, um, that uh, just wants to do their own thing that will defy me and who has shown um, may not... Um, may forget to do certain things and uh, by forgetting to do certain things makes it look like I'm the one that's incompetent or been sabotaged for. Yeah, I've been sabotaged. That's what it boils down to by somebody who is uh, so, uh, a lesser individual who needs to grow the fuck up. So, yeah. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, I've been mm -hmm. ruminating. That's never healthy. About, uh, yeah, a lot of things. And uh, I'm trying to find graceful exits out of things that don't make me look like somebody who's just dropping stuff or just wants to run away. Uh, but that's literally all I want to do. I just want to drop the stuff and say, your problem. Well, good luck with that. Decision uh, and stick uh, and uh, don't just, look back. Yeah, well, that that's what I'm doing. But... Um, I also believe in good endings. Right. Uh, so there's part of me that wants to uh, torch every bridge and go out in a blaze of glory, but there's um, uh, nothing about being reckless in that kind of way that's going to ultimately make me look good. I understand. So, um, yeah. And I know that I'm speaking, I'm speaking cryptically because there are other people's reputations on the line and uh, I'm uh, yeah even though my reputation was attacked I do not want to, to respond in kind uh, because you always end up looking like the one who's bitter but uh, I, I, I am sad I am angry I am a little despondent uh, I've been sabotaged and 
fleeced and some of it was just some plain old dumb bad luck uh, as well. But uh, yeah, my my good nature was taken advantage of and um, just a lot of hard truths were revealed yesterday. So I'm, um, I'm not particularly motivated to do the things that I need to do today because I'm, um, I'm sad. Well, that's a big part of life some days is sadness. So that's when you got to lick your wounds, pack it up and get the fuck on with life because you know what? It's just how it is. I know that sounds harsh, but that's what it boils down to. Well, that's the thing, right? Um, uh, deadlines don't care about no, your they feelings do not. in the world. Nope. Stop for, as Reba McIntyre saying, the world doesn't stop for my nope. broken heart. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, my, my heart's broken a bit today. Tomorrow's another day. The sun uh, will shine. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I, I will try to do the best show I can, kids. Uh, I apologize uh, if I'm not um, my usual self. Uh, yes, James, it isn't you. <laughs> Say out loud, it isn't me. It isn't, yo, oh, it, it isn't me. No, it isn't me. It is. I, I, I'm aware that it isn't me, but it still hurts anyway. Mm. So, uh, but hey, let's try and uh, give you a good show today, all right? Uh, in the Chapaliev. Yeah had an interesting day what a flip-flop on son of a gun i'm not gonna i'm not gonna insult his mother but what a yeah. flip-flopper holy uh, really, jumping judas priest yeah really uh big time i have the video uh okay Nine second so we'll, clip. we'll do the yeah we'll do the video second um the first thing uh that I wanted to mention before we get there is um, Bill C sixty three C C C sixty three, which is the online mm -hmm. arms bill. Um, I was always wondering what Michael Geist would have He's to say about it, because yes, but when it came to the um, the other bills with regard to the internet, or you know, with uh, you know, regard to online news mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, he was all mm -hmm. against it. So, uh, you know, with censorship and all that kind of stuff, I'm thinking, well, you know, some people are calling this censorship too. So I was really interested to see if it was going to, there was going to be a consistency of position or something would change. Uh, and uh, with him, uh, in this case, he seems to uh, appreciate uh, the bill. Yeah, I noticed that. Which is very interesting. So he uh, posted a tweet that had a letter from the leader of the opposition Pierre Poliev in this case, who says, um, well, it's not a letter, basically. It's a press release. I'm guessing it's a press release from his desk. Uh, it says, the Honorable Pierre Poliev, leader of the Conservative Party of Canada and the official opposition, released the following statement, quote, common sense conservatives believe that we should criminalize and enforce laws against sexually victimizing a child or re-victimizing a survivor online, bullying a child online, inducing a child to harm themselves or inciting violence, Criminal bans on intimate contact communicated without consent, including deep fakes, must be enforced and expanded. We believe that these serious acts should be criminalized, investigated by police, tried in court, and punished with jail, not punished off, not pushed off to a new bureaucracy that does nothing to prevent crimes and provides no justice to victims. We do not believe that the government should be banning opinions that contradict the Prime Minister's radical ideology. Common sense conservatives will protect our kids and punish criminals instead of creating instead of creating more bureaucracy and censoring opinions. Okay, um, the first three paragraphs of that were okay. The last two paragraphs of that were utter bullshit, they were. and it led Michael Geist to ask out loud on internet, CPC leader Pierre Poliev on Bill C. 63. Does this mean the party does not believe there's a role or responsibility for internet companies, that these harms are solely a police matter? What of inciting hatred, violence, or extremism, which isn't mentioned in the release? So, of course, he kept it 
two things regarding sex to try to be consistent with this S210 mm-hmm. position about accessing, uh, restricting access to online pornography to uh, people who are 18 and over and having some type of age verification. Thing. Uh, but it's not talking about hate speech. It's not talking about terrorism. It's not talking about inciting violence because, of course, he relies on the votes of a base that he is actively courting that actually believes that the Internet should be used yes. for those purposes and does use the Internet for Every those purposes. Yes, and he does not want to bleed those votes, although he's being consistent because digital ID seems to appeal to the same group of people, and he's flip-flopped on just, that. I just don't. This is not leadership now, material. This is not leadership material. Now, as we mentioned uh, the other day, it seems that Pierre is in a position where if he just adds extreme or radical to anything, he makes it so. Uh, he seems to believe, well, he seems to believe he doesn't believe this. We know he doesn't believe this. He doesn't believe anything that he says. But he's claiming that C-63 is intended to ban opinions that contradict the prime minister's radical ideology, just like he believes that the other internet bills with regard to journalism were there so that the prime minister could have propagandists that would push his mm-hmm. radical ideology, allegedly radical ideology. Um, here's the thing. Hatred is already defined in the criminal code. Decades. Sections C-318 and C-319, and that was defined in 1985. So uh, the prime minister is not redefining no. hatred or not using his personal definition of hatred. He's using the definition of hatred that is already in Long the criminal code since 1985. Who was prime minister at the time? Uh, Conservative Mulroney. prime minister Brian Mulroney. Yeah. Just like he's not using the press to fuel whatever his propaganda is because, I mean, have you seen the mm-hmm. press in Canada? I mean, if he's doing it, he's doing a terrible job at getting the press to push his propaganda. Terrible, 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 terrible. Um, common sense conservatives will protect our kids, punish criminals instead of creating more bureaucracy or censoring opinions. He believes that this type of thing is just bureaucracy. Uh, or he believes, he claims to believe and that will do nothing to protect kids. Uh, what Linda says here, and that was one of the things I thought was smart about the bill, that they're tying it to definitions already in the criminal code. This is well thought out. Yeah. It's well thought out. It's well thought out. It seems to be universally right now because Michael Geis, I expected to be the first person to run to the barricades and say, this is not okay. Mm-hmm. This is the thin edge of the wedge. And just like he said for the other bills, and in this case opposite. it's not. It, it does cause me some mm-hmm. confusion because the other bills clearly were not as well. But he was framing them as opening that door. So I'm not, um, I, don't not, I don't know what to make from what I perceive to be a lack of consistency on his part on the two issues. I assumed he would have behaved the sim, similar on both, but he doesn't. I don't know if there's anything with regard to hate specifically that he's either been touched by or someone that he cares about has been touched by and therefore he has a different position on both. But it just seems to be that if you're from the no regulation of the internet in any way kind of camp, but you're okay with this but weren't okay it's confusing. with wanting to make people pay for journalism uh, it's i like consistency mm-hmm. over time and across subject matters and this so it's confusing but at least i'm happy that there's someone like michael geist saying that this is a decent bill from what he can see at the moment of course the full text mm-hmm. is not yet out and uh, devil's always in the details as we can as we say so um You've got Pierre doubling down on this one, uh, trying to throw red meat to his base on this one, uh, while still trying to push 
the thing that he's doing that he thought would throw red meat to the base, protecting children yeah. from online uh, access, easy online access to porn. But the only method really to do that is either digital ID or some type of face scan. And I am pretty sure that that's data yeah. that uh, the libertarian wing that he is trying never, to court never, no, uh, would not, not be okay. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. And then... Uh, yesterday, we showed you some tweets of him at a rally in Hamilton uh, stating that Canada will support Ukraine. And I was wondering if that is something he was saying because, you know, as we kept on making a point on the show, conservatives don't seem to consider themselves to be Canadian yeah. first, the conservative person who happened to be living in Canada. So I didn't know if that was a way of you know, saying Canadians rather than conservatives this time was a way of excluding himself while still owning the territory. Well, yesterday at a press conference, he had something uh, interesting to say. And it will be conservatives who will continue to stand with the Ukrainian people now against the illegal, unjustifiable, and ego-driven bloodshed initiated by Vladimir Putin. We will stand up every day and every way in favor of the export of 80 3,000 CRV-7 missiles that the Ukrainian government has asked for. We also call on the government to keep its promise that thus far has been broken to deliver air defense systems, $400 million of which were announced in Janu on January 10th, 2023. Putin has said he wants our Arctic. We know that once he defeats one country that he invades, he will move on to the next. His appetite for expansionism is insatiable. We stand with you now and always. Slava Ukraini. And it will be conservatives. Okay. Let me pick this apart for a minute. Uh, Flip-flop boy flip-flopped again after saying he would not vote for the free trade agreement because he said there was a carbon tax that we put in there, which we didn't fucking do. This lying human sack of shit again, separated Canadians and conservatives into two different camps, wouldn't support the budget, wouldn't support the bill, and now all of a sudden he comes out and support. Makes me wonder, did he watch our show where I said, is he in the pocket of Vladimir Putin? Did somebody on his team see that? Because all of a sudden they flip-flopped. And, and this, yep. this is cute, right? This is from Hute. CRV sevens are nice. We don't have eighty three thousand in the entire Canadian Forces stocks. Flip flop boy. People want yeah. this guy to lead the country. He couldn't lead a Boy Scout troop out of the woods. So we have PD flip flops here. Flip flopping on a digital ID. And now flip flopping on the section of the people that he's been courting who are uh, Canada yeah. first. Oh, I know. He's pissed off. We need to stop spending money in Ukraine. We have to help Canadians here first. And then, of course, when you talk about spending that money on actually helping Canadians, oh, well, we can't help those people. We can't help these people. We can't. So yeah. they keep on saying that we should use the money to help Canadians first. And if we were to do that and actually say, okay, well, then let's spend this money on homeless. Well, they don't deserve it. Let's spend it on people that have addictions. They don't deserve it. Let's speak on people for childcare. Well, they don't deserve it. I had to pay. This guy changes right. whenever the wind blows a different direction. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Yeah. Or, you know, absolving people of student loans. Hey, I had to pay for mine. That's not fair. So they don't actually want the money. I don't know what they want the money for. Because they say they wanted to help people, but they don't want to help people because those are government programs and they don't believe in them because they're conservatives. And they don't believe. Heaven forbid we should help someone who actually needs it. Right? I guess well, we, we could help businesses with it and yet another corporate tax cut, but actual people that are trying to put food on their plate, well, then, no. So I don't know if the Conservative Party of Canada got some internal polling numbers that indicated he was taking with a particular demographic or was about to or something, but this full-throated uh, support of Ukraine all of a sudden is completely inconsistent with everything uh, that we've seen 
over the past at least six, seven months. Easily. Um, I, I, I don't get Well, this. he's driven by polls rather than purpose. I'm going to read a tweet yeah. to you here. But I mean, from Peter Ratcliffe. When you're driven by polls rather than purpose, your statements will present you as a liar over time. The CPC leader railed about vaccines taking too long, then flipped to support anti-vox convoy thinking. The CPC has voted against aid to Ukraine and has now flipped again. Whichever the wind, whichever the way the wind blows, he is motivated by polls winning the nanosecond. He doesn't give a shit about Canadians. All he cares about is power. That is it. I'm going to say that till the day I die because it's true. Yeah. He only cares yeah. about power. He doesn't care about you. He doesn't give a damn about anybody but himself. Yeah. So he's gone from um, the Ukrainians asked for these shells, so we should give it to them. But the Ukrainians asked for this free trade deal, and we should not give it to them. I'm, I can't follow this guy. Bipolar? But Pierre, if you're watching, you were there for the Aaron Hole tool thing. You're the one that overthrew yeah. him. Do you not realize that O'Toole flip-flopping left, right, and center on stuff is what did him? Do you into? You're doing the exact same thing. You've come down with a case of O'Toole syndrome. Well, and here's the other thing. And perhaps that is why David Parker is putting out hmm. these things. I think that's what it is. Because you're weak. Very. And he spotted it. He spotted how weak you are. He spotted your freaking windsock. Yeah. I'll say one thing about David Parker. He is remarkably consistent on stuff. I'll give him stuff. that. I'll give him that because he is. It's like. You know, um, it's ill illogical and irrational. Mm. But remarkably consistent. He doesn't seem to switch positions all that much. But you do. And um, I don't know if the next time a journalist is going to ask you about why it is that you oppose one thing and support another thing, and uh, you're going to start asking what outlet they're from again and start attacking the journalist. But um, yeah. So you can't betray Ukrainians, Ukrainian Canadians on free trade. And then go to them and start begging for their votes and then betray the PPC anti-Putin stance, uh, pro-Putin stance in the other breath and expect to keep on doing this for 19 months and expect to win. It's not going to happen. He won't be in power. He'll be gone before the next election. His own party uh, down, and members of his own party or people within the organization are trying to bring him down because they realize he's weak and he flip flops so damn much trying to win the bloody nanosecond. And it is not an effective way to lead. It is not. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't get this guy. What's he hiding? I don't get What's he guy. hiding? That, that's what you, you got to start What is asking, he hiding? Right? Because this, this is, how can you speak that passionately about this subject in this instance? While in everything else that you do, you seem to be pushing propaganda from the Kremlin. And using the ta the same tactics, I just ah uh, oh, man, 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 man. I don't know if there's anything in the internal polling. I don't. I do not know. But it's weird. It's inconsistent. Jim Jim, Jim Johnston has a good point. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you, Jim. Please stop teaching Pierre Polyev how to win votes. I'm happy with him as the opposition leader, guaranteeing that the blue party doesn't end up in power. I, 
I hear what you're saying. I do. I do. I, yeah. Just frustrated, you know? Yeah. Well, the thing is, again, he's he's trying to serve two masters at once. And you just can't. You got to pick one. You got to pick one. You can't try to appeal to the moderates and appeal to the fringe at the same time. Mm. You got to pick one. And the fringe is who he is. Uh, yeah, we need a good shake of the etch a sketch where both Trudeau and Polyev are gone by the next election. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I just can't. Uh, I can't watch both of them in action and watch the accomplishments and watch where both are coming from and say that they're both the same and they both no, have to go. No. I just can't. Th there is a market difference um, between the one two. has been there for twenty years and has done one piece of legislation in twenty years. One piece. The other one. And the other one got us through the worst pandemic in a hundred years, while keeping us whole and making sure that we don't go into a recession, and also got us through four years of Trump without losing his mm -hmm. dignity or his cool. Or lashing out in any way that could cause us economic harm. And so now we've got this other uh, clip yesterday from Daniel Smith. Of Daniel Smith. This is from the breakdown from Nate. And yeah. uh, check this out. This is and interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wonder if you're finally willing to say a few words about him and his role and, and what he's doing now, which seems to have made a great many conservatives very angry. Hmm. Well, look, um, I have to be absolutely clear that nobody tells me what to do as premier. The, the people I take my marching uh, orders from are Albertans. Every decision that I make is done through the lens of what is best for Albertans. Now, I, I consult widely, absolutely, but I don't take the advice of every single person that I speak to. Uh, when it comes to uh, him in particular, I look, I just don't want to be associated with that kind of commentary, and I don't want to be associated with that kind of personal attack and bullying. That is not who I am. Anyone who has watched how I conduct myself in public is that even when I vehemently disagree with somebody, I disagree with them respectfully, and I never resort to personal attacks and bullying. It, it, it is, I think it is beneath anyone in public office to conduct themselves in that way, and I simply won't do it. True enough, yes, I told him to delete his ex account and to get some help, because I would say that those kinds of um, uh, comments are unprofessional, and it does not help to elevate the discussion in the public square. So I've been very clear on that. There's a, it, it seems sometimes, and, and, and Mr. Parker says much the same thing. He says, he says he's not your boss and you're not his boss, that's for sure. Uh, but then I see that on March 23rd, he's going to be appearing with uh, Devin Grishin, your minister, at a policy conference. I wonder if you, you will still be collaborating with him. You've been friends with him. You went to his wedding. Uh, are you going to cut him off completely? Or, or how is that work? Well, you'll have to talk to Minister Dreeshen. I understand he was invited to some discussion about um, uh, municipal politics. Um, I don't know that he's going to attend. You'll have to ask him if he's planning to attend. But look, as I've said, I, I talk uh, broadly and widely with a wide range of people. I consult on a whole variety of issues to be able to do what's best for Albertans. And I'm going to continue to consult widely on issues, but I've made it very clear. I want nothing to do with any kind of comments that are personal of nature, um, that are that are attacking in nature, and that are bullying nature. I, we, we just shouldn't be putting up with that in the public square. Okay. So yeah. much bullshit. So much bullshit. Okay. First of all, I don't take orders. From who else do you take orders? Because 2024 Daniel Smith is way different than 2014 Daniel Smith. 2014 Daniel Smith was in the legislature talking about transgender and gay people and how they should have access to gay straight alliances. And 2024 Danielle Smith, who claims that she's not into bullying and that's just not who she is, just released a soft music, a seven-minute video. <clears throat> 
saying, hey, transgender kids, here's how I'm going to bully you. Which led to a situation where a 37-year-old transgender person ended their life. Ended their life. So, uh, All right. Um, you know, doesn't denounce him fully because doesn't say, no, he's not invited to that event. Oh, you'll have to talk to the minister. It's like, you're the damn premier. If you don't want him to be at that event, you can tell your minister that you don't want him at that damn event. To make it happen. Um, you know, I, I just, I can't with her. She won't say his name. She won't say his name. Mm-hmm. Got the four girls from Destiny's Child going, say his name, say his name. Um, it's just so much. Yeah, I know. It, it's just a whole bunch of shit. I don't want to be a... And it's like, I don't want to be associated with that kind of personal attack and bullying. I wish Tucker Carlson would put Stephen Gilbo in his crosshairs. She's a bully. She's totally completely in her eight minute video. In her eight minute video where she told, just told Albertans that she's going to pull the rug out under them for the income tax cut. You know, it would be nice if we had somebody in Ottawa that wasn't like radical or like this. She's, she threw some. She threw a dig, mm-hmm. the prime minister, right in there. She's a classic bully. Oh yeah. She's nice, nasty. Well, gaslighting, backstabbing, duplicitous. She made her bed with Take Back Alberta, which is a bullying organization. Mm-hmm. They've taken over the party, but she claims that she doesn't take. She claims that she consults widely, except on her transgender bill, where she can. can consulted with no transgender people whatsoever. We just heard the story of one person and ran with that. Come on. Come on. <sighs> Kids and Cubs. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do, do, do you have a show? Yeah. Kids and Cubs, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember that sharing is caring. And that word of mouth is priceless. So please, please, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. If you would like to make sure you don't miss an episode, you do not have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. You just need to scan that QR code that appeared underneath my chin. And that will bring you to our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. And uh, that way, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it will come directly to you. If you want to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver Media YouTube page and click all our buttons, lick, share, and subscribe. And if you <laughs> click on that, if you, if you scan that uh, QR code next to my uh, head, you can go straight to the YouTube page because you might be watching this on any one of uh, Twitter feeds or additional Cryer Media feeds or a Facebook page somewhere. Well, that'll take you straight to the YouTube page, our YouTube page, where you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe, and you can also join in the chat with the damn fam. Yeah. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, uh, do go right there, right on cue, Mr. Grizzly to our coffee page, the QR code right by Mr. Grizzly's head right now. We'll bring you there. That's where you can find the Eager Beaver Lodge uh, Emergency Hydration Fund, where our friends Caesar, Guinness, coffee, and hot chocolate help keep us moist. So we can deliver this product for you. And uh, we thank you very much for all your contributions. We have some people to thank specifically. Hopefully we'll be able to do that on Friday's show uh, because we haven't forgotten about you. We left a Give the recognition and the love. Because democracy is something that you do, write those letters, please, 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 especially if you have somebody in your life that is in any way different. Please Specifically, I would suggest writing a letter to Pierre Polyev's office, even if you're not one of his constituents. Maybe send in an old flip-flop and say, this is who you are. Yeah. 
And uh, all right, that's my words uh, of wisdom. It could be a tough world. Yeah. Okay. Well, those are the words of wisdom. It could be a tough world out there, kids. So uh, please be kind to and gentle with yourself. I know I will be with myself today. Um, thank you to everybody who uh, wrote and called and sent messages and support and. All of that, it, it is seen, it is uh, noted, it is appreciated, it means a lot, it does help. Uh, but, you know, as there are things in life you can't go over it, can't go under it, can't go around it, just got to go through go it. Go through it. And I'm going through it right now, um, but I'm uh, not happy it about happens. it. <clears throat> yeah. Mr. Grizzly, please cue the rooster. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients Fill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.